Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. Today I am going to feature a brand new paper called Fabriano Rosas Pinas. I'm going to uh, put the uh, text on the screen. Uh, it is a new dim uh, dimension here. It instead of the regular twenty-two by thirty, this is a little bit smaller. This is twenty inches wide by twenty-seven and a half. So it's very slightly smaller than my regular 22 by 30 format. So I had to reconfigure my plate and the registration bars. I had to move the left side registration bar closer to the plate and the same thing with this, I had to move, shift the plate slightly higher so it gets centered on the paper because the width and the length are different. So, uh, another thing about the Rosa Spinas, it does have a watermark. It's a very beautiful watermark, actually. I don't know if you can see it. See that? It's stamped Fabriano. So if you hold it up against the light on the other side, you will see the trademark. And I think that's very neat. So. I'm not sure if there is a right side or a wrong side, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the smooth side. And that's the, the side that I'm going to use for printing. So it's going to be like this when I place it on the plate. The paper very slightly curves this way. So that's the way, another way that I can determine that it's the side that I want to print on. So anyway, um, let me get started with the plate. Today I'm going to use my acrylic paint pen. This is a no-name brand acrylic paint pen from Amazon. I'm going to start by doing my scribbles. Now, like I mentioned before, drawing with a paint pen on the gel plate is a little challenging because it there's a bit of uh, resistance since it's a very flexible surface. So I have to control the pen, otherwise it's going to start skipping. Okay, that's it for the first layer. By the way, this is a brown. Um, I'm not sure it even tells you what color it is, um, but I think it is brown. And then I'll follow it up with a Sharpie black.
Okay, so that's my first layer of marks. And uh, now my next step will be to ink this with uh, a light color. I'm going to do a Naples yellow. And I'm combining it with some raw sienna. So I'm starting in the middle with a light color and then moving my way outwards so I have two zones of yellow And I'm just moving in an upward downward motion. So I'm creating a kind of a grain, just like you have with wood, the grain goes in a certain direction. Okay. I'm going to do additional marks. And hopefully this is going to be in the middle or centered on the paper. Now another thing I found out when I was recalibrating my registration bar, when I started measuring the plate I realized the plate is not plumb. In other words, in some areas it's wider and in some areas it gets narrower. So it's really not 90 degrees. So I have to take the average, kind of eyeball it. Um, now, 
you may not be as particular about the edges, but I really prefer that the image is centered properly in the middle of the paper. Uh, and when I make many prints, what happens when you register properly, the image always falls in the same place. And it becomes critical when you are doing several layers that they line up. So that's just a, a note. Okay. Now I have never used this paper before. It has a beautiful smooth finish and it seems very soft and supple. So I, I won't leave the paper on too long. I think the uh, print has transferred well. It's really stuck on the plate. I think it's a uh, high time for you know what I'm gonna do something different I'm going to try to never done this before. This reminds me of my professor in school. She did something and she said, never do this. And it's funny that that's what I remember. I think I tore the paper. so much for the durability of this paper. It's fragile. It's very beautiful, but it is fragile. I'm not too happy to do this, but I don't want to tear this paper. Oh, here we go. So it looks like it's not really suitable for doing layers. This is terrible. Another train wreck. And you saw it first on Art Whisperer 88. I think other artists would be ashamed to show this disaster. But I'm showing you what the real world is. 
So this is nothing that can't be fixed. I can patch this from the back. In fact, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to use my Mod Podge, you guessed it. And I'm going to reinforce the ripped portion. Well, one word of advice is when this happens is do not flip out do not panic it's a learning experience this is what i meant with the plate being a shapeshifter that it's a certain width here and it's much narrower there it's because the plate after a while it loses its uh, uh, defined shape because it's very flexible but you know I'll, I'll live with it and work around it So this is the culprit. What a sticky mess. So what I have to do is figure out a way to clean this off. I'm going to use uh, just some soapy water. The silver lining is I like the transfer of the marks. They're very clearly defined, and I, I do like the texture. So that was a harrowing first layer. I wouldn't wish it on any artist. So back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm glad I got over that awful incident. Now I uh, went through my tried and true reusable stencils and I did a configuration here off camera and I decided I'm going to use bronze. This is Liquitex Basics Bronze. and just use one color
Now since I'll be working around these stencils, I didn't see the need to use a wide brayer. I'm kind of just filling in the gaps. I don't see the need to ink on the stencils themselves. So I'm just, I apologize for this squeaky, squeaky brayer. I'm just making sure I hit all the high spots, flatten out the uh, paint so I don't get any blocks. So now that I know that the Fabriano Rosa Spinas is more delicate, I'm going to be careful and not let the paper sit too long. In fact, I even have to be careful when I pull the paper. I can't be too rough with it. So you learn by doing, because otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how, because I've never used that paper before. Okay, I think I have them all. making sure my fingers are clean. So here is, here's a print with the nasty tear. Now I have coated the tear with Mod Podge just to seal it. Okay, so no long wait times for this kind of paper. It's a little bit of an improvement. That is the second layer. And then I can think about what comes next. And in the meantime, this is such a nice ghost print. I will 
use this parchment. And some, the last few drops of my raw sienna. I just realized the watermark is on both ends. So there's no upside down or right side up. Either side is fine. Okay, let's see what we have here. I like this. Very subtle and no tears. Check this out. Very beautiful modulation of tones. Kind of a monochromatic motif. It's like an old Egyptian, kind of like a something from ancient times. So I'm glad I got over the uh, that hump. So I'm going to air dry this and I'll be right back. I see if I can if I can reuse these guys. and have them face down instead. And I think by having these face down, the uh, leftover paint will act as a glue so they don't shift around. Let me try a mix of a mix of green oxide and some indigo.
having these stencils face down also allows what's left over to offset on the plate. Here's the one with the second layer. It's a very painterly effect. Now there's a slight mis misregistration, but that's okay because the borders are very thin. And I don't even notice the torn part anymore. So uh, the metallic really does give it a different dimension. So uh, that was a close call. Now, I think this will make a beautiful ghost print. Um, I'm going to do something different here. Do some a mix of Naples yellow and this colorless fluid matte medium. So there will be parts of it that are clear and there will be parts of it that have the Naples yellow. Let's see how this goes. Here's the other one. Yeah, for, for this is just my you know, uh, observation. The thinness of the paper 
is a bit of a problem for me because I'm used to more uh, sturdy papers. So I think I'm going to stick to the heavier artistico. Well, Briano artistico is sturdy enough. Or the Strathmore 400 is also very uh, beefy, as they call it. But I think this texture is beautiful. I think I can tell already. It's like, like a watercolor. I think this is, so far, this is the most complex texture. I, I like this effect. It's like a watercolor. And it's very subtle and soft. As I will show you when I recap. I think the uh, textures are gorgeous. So I get to air dry this and then I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, back from a short break. I went through my box of uh, scraps and then this is uh, what's left of my cheat sheet. The one that has uh, gold and uh, vermilion. I forget the name. I think this is cadmium red light. And I think this will make a nice addition to this piece because it has uh, such good complementary colors. So I'm going to go ahead and This will look good here. I think it makes a nice counterpoint to the soft uh, dark green colors. And it's making use of an element that otherwise would be discarded That makes a nice composition. And there's enough activity that you 
you won't even know that there's a huge tear here. And there was. It's not there anymore. So, just going to go ahead and mount these. I find that the plastic sheet is remarkably well behaved. It mounts very easily. It doesn't fight me. So that's it for the first collage. So this is a true mixed media piece because it's a combination of paper and plastic. So um, I'm going to air dry this with the uh, desk fan. And I'll be right back to recap. Okay, everybody, this is my favorite part where I get to do a recap. And uh, by now the pieces have dried and the texture has improved a lot. Let me show you a close up. So you can see the traces of the Sharpie pens and the acrylic markers, as well as the textures of the brayer. And the pieces of cheat sheet, the pl little plastic cheat sheets. So I think if handled in proper manner, this Sabriano Rosa Spinas can create very good results. I just have to be careful when I pull the print, I have to do it in a timely manner.
So that is the first print. Now this is my favorite, of course, because it's a ghost print. And I love the leftover leaf here. This is, looks like copper leaf. Here's a close up. And I love the atmospheric look created by the textures. It's kind of a, uh, a soft, powdery, almost powdery texture. So there you have it. That's my adventure with Fabriano Rosa Spina. It's a little difficult for me to pronounce. It's a workable paper. It's very affordable. I did some more research and the reason why the thinner, less expensive paper don't hold up as well because they are not made of cotton. They're made of wood pulp. Now, wood pulp is not as strong as cotton fiber. Uh, cotton fiber is very fine and holds up to washing. I mean, you, you know that every day when you do the laundry. Now, wood pulp has its strength because it's mixed with sizing. And it does feel very nice when it's dry, but it's a lot cheaper and not as strong. So that's, you know, the difference between wood pulp versus 100% cotton. So uh, that's the old saying, you get what you pay for. But since I'm doing experimental work, I feel more comfortable using less expensive materials. You know, I'm trying to keep costs down and I'm going to reserve the expensive European papers for uh, more tried and true methods. To me, learning about the paper and how different materials behave to me that is worth, makes it all worth it. So thank you so much for watching and coming along for the ride. And I hope to see you next time.